Hello everybody and welcome to this little impromptu interview. Uh, we are at Terminal 4 of Heathrow. Terminal 4 Hilton. Hilton, in fact. Um, and we're joined here by Alan, who is on tour, basically. Uh, what have you been doing this week? <laughs> so this week uh, we had the privilege of Jason Rose coming into the UK. So as part of the UK Rupes team, we joined him doing a little tour. So we provided uh, a training session and then we uh, collaborated with KDS who had their open day and we managed to turn up there and chat a bit there so it was super super cool and then because it's bank holiday weekend the flights back were ridiculous so instead of spending £400 in flying pack I spent £200 and gave myself a couple of admin days here and I get to hang out with you so that's indeed, cool. Indeed. And well we wanted to have a quick chat, Alan's literally got to hop on an aeroplane back to Aberdeen very soon. In literally 50 minutes. So uh, we're going to keep it snappy which is not something either of us are particularly good at. No. Be said. <laughs> um, but we wanted to talk about training and the reason I want to talk about training is as you know Alan is a Rupes trainer, you are an IDA registered, record what's it, RT? They're called an RT. RT, so uh, top of the line uh, IDA trainer and you're going all over the world now by the sounds of things starting to sort of looking at uh, IDA related business should it's we say. It's incredible, yeah really really privileged, it's a cool opportunity. And um, at the same time we see quite a lot of uh, online training, well there's quite a lot of training courses online so to speak in terms of people promoting their training course and there have been a number of training courses that have been around for years that are you know registered with various other organisations and also which I kind of find a little bit sad is, is there's a kind of an anti-training side or an anti-movement against people just setting up and suddenly de sort of declaring themselves as of a course. trainer. Of course. And so what we thought would be a really good idea is to uh, talk about what to look for in a training course. So if you are thinking, right, I would really like to do a training course, be that a refresher of your experience, be that an introduction to get an idea whether you want to do this professionally, uh, whether it could just be an enthusiast, isn't it? Of course, it? yeah. Um, just looking after your own car better. So I wanted to ask Alan, what do you suggest people look for in a training course um, when it comes to picking which one to do? Sure, so it's kind of, that's a really big open-ended question, it is. Uh, actually, as in sometimes you, you kind of want to know what you're looking for, and then the other times you have these trainers that aren't really describing or selling what they're delivering. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so if you're starting out and you're looking for a training session, then I would really look to see if that trainer has some, uh, some feedback. Mm -hmm. who has been going to that trainer and did people find value in that training. So basically look for reviews and see if you can see um, what that person's training. That person doesn't need to have all the accreditations in the world. Like I'm sat here right now and it's a privilege to be assisting you with training, to be assisting the IDA with training and of course being part of the Rupes group. But um, you know, I don't, I don't know everything. Mm -hmm. I, I just dial in on those things. And I think sometimes um, you just need to potentially go in and have a training is just to inspire. So, you know, you don't, the person doesn't need to know everything about training. I'm almost validating why I call myself a trainer. Here, but, um, you know, I am not a wet sanding specialist, you know. So the trainer does what he does and hopefully delivers that well. So when you're looking for a course, just think about what it is you want to get from that course. And sometimes, and this is personally for me as well as a professional, I like to look for just basic courses as well. I want to be re-inspired. I want to go and see how are guys teaching that detailing should be done from from grassroots. But for you at the lens right there looking down the camera, I would definitely see what is it you want to learn? What is it that you want to progress in? Or are you just looking for validation? Mm -hmm. And that's that's very valid. There are an awful lot of people who are self-taught um, and from our experience with the PPD side we find there are quite often guys with 25, 30 years experience self-taught and there are certain things they're very very good at but there are gaps because they haven't got the, the holistic understanding of say the science behind it. You know they've learned from a process led you know if I do this this will happen uh, but not necessarily answering why it will happen. And then equally there are guys with three to five to six years experience who have been a sponge for so long that they've got they absolutely shock us with their kind of of knowledge yeah. um, and so it's, it's a matter of um, filling in those gaps and I always say it's, it's a combination of real-world experience and if you want to do it professionally there's a huge difference between doing it professionally and just doing your own car and again a lot of people get quite a long way down the line and want to become a professional then suddenly realize it's much less fun than just doing your own car once a month and then have to kind of reverse um, but it's it, it's really key to have that balance of, of training to give you a structure to give you a bit more knowledge behind it and then experience and it's even just things like muscle memory. If you look at an experienced detail, they pick up a machine like they've just got an extension to their arm. Yeah, of course. Um, whereas if you've got somebody like me who's very much an armchair detailer, you can pick a machine up like this and you end up edging by mistake. So I think that's a, a, an important element, is what you want to get out of it. 
pure toy. Um, what other people have felt, and also bear in mind, as you said, you don't need to be the world's best detailer to teach detailing, you need to be a good teacher. 100%. And that's really important. I've met some really good detailers who are not great communicators, whereas I've met some very mediocre detailers, if, if you want to put such a tag on that, yeah. um, who are just so good at, at making a noise and getting people interested and engaging people that the people come out of it knowing a lot more as a consequence. Of course. And then also the other thing I want to briefly touch on, if we can, which I think we can. Oh, of course. Um, we'll, I'm sure they'll hold on the runway for you. <laughs> um, the plane, that is. Um, the uh, manufacturer affiliations, because again, they come into a sure. lot of flack from people who are, you know, declare, oh, he's just a certificate collector. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of validity in, in some of that, because there are some uh, accreditation, which I've seen where you literally can do it over the phone, or you just have to buy a certain amount of product, uh, mm -hmm. or you go to a sort of a, a kind of a, a sales meeting rather than a training session. But at the same time, there are courses out there, or, or rather accreditations out there, that do mean something, um, and there is a genuine assessment element to it, because otherwise you're just getting a certificate of attendance or a certificate of a fat wallet. Um, there aren't that many manufacturer courses where there's a formal test, should we say, but one of the more rigorous, I believe, to be the GTEC course, which of course you've done back yes, in the day. Yes, um, and we've just put Tasha through that. So Tasha's now a G-Technic accredited installer in herself, which has uh, been great validation for me as a trainer, because I, it was only me passing on the information I learned from G-Technic to get Tasha up to speed, to then have Adam come up and put her through what he delivers at uh, G-Technic Works, and for him to come around and say, you've absolutely nailed it, I picked her up on two or three little things, mm -hmm. and that's great. But what was great about him picking her up on those two or three little things was that just shows you what I think is a key thing that we as detailers, even if you feel you're there, should just be doing some sort of refresher or just mm -hmm. doing some sort of course to keep yourself dialed in because I've been a GTN accredited detailer, I would say six, maybe eight years, mm -hmm. and I did that original course. Now, I dial in with the guys once a year <laughs> terribly it sounds as an over the phone trainer <laughs> um, but it's not until you get to spend that time with them and really fresh so it's cool that Adam has joined the company since I had been made accredited and learned this new stuff and now that he's constantly delivering that information and he's constantly using those products when he then comes and teaches you you know he's even picking us up on some little more I would say efficiencies yes. so how we can make sure we're being more efficient with the product not that we weren't qualified to install it. Well that's a really nice point actually and that is that uh, and it's something because we're developing our own you know training and assessment systems as well and it, what's interesting is there's often more than one way of achieving something mm -hmm. Um, but from a professional point of view, what you're looking for is something achieving that that task, bit correcting that paint or cleaning that vehicle uh, as efficiently as possible. By which I mean as safely as possible and as quickly as possible within that safety side. And safety is first in terms of, of not doing damage. Of course. But efficiency means value for money for your customers. So it's all very well saying, okay, I will machine polish this car for two weeks. Well, that you know, unless you're <laughs> working Charge for four grand. Yeah. Well, exactly. <laughs> um, so the the quicker and safer that you can do things, the more efficient. And that often points to what the right way of doing things is. It's, it's a combination of the safest and the most efficient way of doing things. Um, but the, the other point I wanted to bring up on accreditations and stuff is um, there's always a benefit in something you can fail. So if you turned up to GTEC all those years ago totally. and you started licking the machine polisher and, and sort of dribbling all over the car, um, you would not have got that accreditation. No. Whereas with those where you just buy £100 worth of product or whatever it might be, um, or you're just friends with somebody, um, those ones you can't really fail, and so they've kind of got less cred. It's like when somebody says they've got an A-level, you know, nobody knows you can fail an A-level. God knows I do. Um, and as a consequence, you know, they've got a certain amount of respect to them. Yeah, we've had this open conversation about the, the things that PVD are developing. We won't divulge too much in the video, I'm not entirely sure how much we have, but uh, I was quite active on the board and in the email saying to you that I can't wait to sit what's being created because I'm excited to see where uh, I fall shallow. Yes. So that, that then points to me, well, one, do I need that knowledge for what I deliver in my company? Mm -hmm. I, I have no reason to understand PPF installation. It's not what EM details do. So what we need to do and train and become proficient in is what we do. So what I'm hoping is in sitting this exam and we may fall down in some areas, I can go, great, here guys, we can now dial in on this. Mm -hmm. Does that mean we need now to go and have a look at the course of doing it? Do we need to approach a manufacturer with PVD developing this future content? Would they then have direct links to get us to those people? So I think that's another exciting thing about going on courses and sit in exam type work. So it gives you, one, the validation, but two, also, don't be upset about failing in that area. Mm -hmm. It's it's great to then go, wow, okay, I could be more efficient here or I could improve here, which at the end of the day is either going to supply you uh, a 
increased revenue stream, um, or it's just going to better round you as a detailer having that knowledge. Indeed, and, and avoid mistakes. I mean, the one thing we're doing with the course is it's in 10 modules so far. I mean, we're, we're, uh, it's all in development, and so we can't go into too much detail. But each one, you're talking a 90 minute theory and then a practical exam connected with it. And it's designed to be taken over years. It's not a sort of turn up mm -hmm. in two days and somebody become a master detailer, because that's, I think, <laughs> that's impossible. Yeah. Um, and uh, which means a good point as well is that you can't just sort of go on, on, on what you've got on paper. It's very much a combination of that experience and that training yes. um, to be holistically talented. Um, but yes, yeah, so, so the idea when you're out looking for training, establish what you want from the training. Um, look at what other people have taken from it and whether they feel that it was time and money well spent. And bear in mind, for an existing professional detailer, quite often you'll see a training course is £300 for the day or something like that, um, when actually some of the top detailers will be making double that per day. So for them, the big cost is not working that day, or rather not working on a customer course, course. Of course. Um, which is another you know, significant cost to, to consider. Um, but it's always a good idea to, to prepare, think what you want out of it, look at what others have said about it, and certainly with accreditations, um, the ones, particularly if you're a customer looking to use a detailer, is to consider the accreditations which you can fail, the ones that just can't be bought, the ones where you're actually face-to-face -face assessment um, and people can, can potentially be turned away from, because of course I think that, that adds validity to those who, who pass it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I'm sure we'll be talking a lot about training and assessments over the coming months and years. It will. Uh, lots of very exciting developments in the pipeline, both from uh, Alan's, you know, with the uh, IDA, RT side of things, and yes. doing more and more courses over here, I believe, and more assessments. So the idea is, uh, is just a very quick one, as lots of people are asking, what is the training about, or what is this? It's more uh, to assessments, mm -hmm. and it's only about assessing the entry level for what we are calling detailing. Mm. There are specific things coming in the future that will dial in on bikes and dial on other things, but a lot of people ask me, so I'll just use this tool in a minute, uh, you know, why should I go and do an ID assessment, why should I? And the goal is just to make sure you're at that benchmark level. Yeah. And what's been super cool is we've got guys that come in that maybe can machine polish and do whatever, but during the uh, assessment phase, you know, I'm still gonna pass them. They're achieving the goal mm. in machine polishing, but the great thing that I find in spending one-on-one -on -one time with the trainers, it's why I like to go and get trained, is that person can maybe see, whilst doing that, that training, another area where they can give you a tip of trice or an efficiency, yes. and then they can advise, maybe go and see Bert about this sort of training, or go and see Alan about this sort of training, um, and they can flag that up at that time. So that's what the IDA courses are about, it's about setting that minimum benchmark. So mm -hmm. the big massive pros, they still gotta make sure they're hitting this minimum benchmark, um, but that's what it is, they're not super tough, or the sort of exam you're looking to bring out. They're just, the first one is a presentation and a tick box to check you're at the level. And then the other one is a you must attend assessment, a visual watch. So mm -hmm. we will basically ask you to clean a wheel and watch how you clean a wheel and do you do it safely and is it done right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and both the practical elements of both sort of side of syllabuses is done kind of like a practical driving test. Yes. You know, if you make a, a, a little fault, it's a minor, it's fine as long as you're not making them everywhere. Of course. Uh, but if you make a dangerous fault, um, then that's a, sorry mate, but uh, yeah, each one has a, if they do this, they're failed. If not, there's usually between 10 and 20 marks we can give someone, and they might only reach 17, 16 marks, mm -hmm. but overall it'll still be a pass. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So it's all quite exciting stuff, really, isn't it? Really exciting. So I just wanted to dial on the end of that if I could. So, of course, uh, make sure you're checking out what kind of trainers that person provided and what you're looking for. But for me, I would definitely look for a trainer as a professional or not, especially if it's a field you're going into, that's gonna provide you dedicated time on that tool mm -hmm. or dedicated time carrying out that process. Yes. Whether it's gonna be, it's a two day course instead of one, because we're not gonna lie, the majority of the time you're gonna be on a machine or doing whatever, or whether it's like a course I've seen someone do recently, they, they learn a bit of video editing, just like your distance learning, and then they go away and have to create a video, they have to go through the process, they have to put the time in, mm -hmm. and then present that video to uh, their instructor who will then critique it and send them away again. It's kind of like coursework. Yeah, of course, so uh, they are the ones that are, I think are gonna provide you with the most value. Um, as much as, for example, the tour we've done right now are great like one day refreshers or great one day knowledge bombs, mm -hmm. those sort of courses are designed so that you can then go away, study that and practice it. But if you're really looking to get, I think, maximum value is try and get one where the person is going to allow you to have that time to action what you've done and supervise it. Yeah, and, and I'll just add a little bit onto that. 
is breadth of syllabus is just as important as depth yeah. because we're seeing more and more people who can machine polish really pretty well um, but you find detailers not offering interior services because they don't do interiors anymore and you'll find you know engine bays and stuff some amazing paint correction going on but when it comes to doing engine bays which is my personal from a personal point of view my favorite thing is taking engines apart and then <laughs> failing to put them together again properly um, and, and those areas are lacking and that's again what a holistic syllabus will do is it'll make sure that everything is up to standard um, and then that is detailing detailing is not paint correction paint correction is part of detailing which is something I quite often find myself sort of lecturing at people because yeah. um, they're like oh I'm a great detail I can machine polish and I'm like okay that's great but can you remove this sort of stain from this sort of fabric what chemical would you use uh, don't know and that's the sort of thing where and again that sort of thing is checked with the IDA test uh, and it's the sort of thing we're going to great depth uh, in the terms of the PVD assessment excited I'm very excited for that it's going to be cool very exciting cool. anyhow thank you very much for watching and I'm sure Alan will be on your screens very soon thank you um, I, I'm afraid I'll probably be on your screens as well at some point too um, and uh, we shall do another video together very soon probably at Waxdoc Yes, let's do one at Waxdoc, 100%. 21st of July at the Rico Arena in Coventry. Um, Alan says he wants to do some crowd surfing, so if we can get a crowd together... I think we enough crowd. We'll, yeah, we'll just, we'll just throw Alan on and see what happens, so those with sort of broad shoulders who can take it, that'd be good. Yeah. Um, and we will do some more anyway. Been a pleasure. Thank you very much, sir. Cheers. Tell me, the, the, well. the, the training thing is a... Uh, it interests me a lot. I like what's going on there. Ooh, and... Yeah. I forgot. I must tell you there, and you there, <laughs> that... Um, if you have three trainers delivering the same content, you may just twig with one. So it becomes one of those things where I was talking about researching that you can have the same trainer deliver a piece of content and you love it, then have another trainer deliver the piece of content and maybe just because of their personality or their language or how they go about delivering that content, you don't get it, but it was the same content. So I think if you find someone that you enjoy learning from, then just tap them for everything if they're going to release a bit of material. You'll see a lot of people online going, oh, should I go on this marketing course? Or should I go on this one that the guy I already know provides? Mm -hmm. But it's a little bit more, or it's a little bit less. Does that mean it's going to have as much value? And I would just go to the person you know you already potentially have a great relationship with. You know that you two click. Because um, at the end of the day, when you go to learn something, you want to enjoy it. You don't want to go with a friction. Well, think about it at school. I mean, at school, my, I got on best. I had a, 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 a favorite uh, teacher. Exactly, I had a history teacher called um, uh, Mr. Richards, a Welshman, and I got on with him better than anyone else. And then I ended up going on and doing history, and that was that was the other degree on that was was because of that time spent with that one teacher. So yes. I totally agree with that. Pick somebody who you get on with, and bear in mind that you might as well be a long-term compadre in that you'll be regularly phoning up for tips and, and to ask, you know, getting yourself really out of sticky messages now and then. Yeah. And so it's always handy to have somebody who will have that aftercare support and who you can just pick up the phone to, and you're not nervous about doing it. Yeah. 100% I just wanted to make sure we dialed that bit in there because some people when you read their reviews online say hey I went and seen this guy and I just didn't get it and other people will love it and if you ever see that 50-50 it's probably the trainer not the content. And so uh, now just before you miss your plane, have you forgotten anything else? <laughs> Have I forgotten anything else? Uh, I'm trying to think. Yes, one thing on training, in fact, I will. Um, just because this is a detailing or, uh, or valeting or pro detailer piece of content, look outside of our niche yes. for training. Remember, business is business, marketing is marketing, video is video, etc., etc. So there may be other people outside of the industry that can deliver the content, and you might have to put a bit of hard work in to bridge the gaps. That's how I got to be where I am. I went off into other niches to learn how they do stuff and then applied it to this industry. So. Absolutely, and again, running a business, a balloting business or otherwise, is, is a different thing from our little microcosm of detailing, which is very easy to feel that you're in this little world, but actually there's much more out there. Of course. Um, and I think it is really important. And other things like photography. Hell, I do a lot of photography courses yeah. because that's relevant. Um, but I never meet anybody else who's into, into car detailing. They're just Go and do it, be inspired, and then that might improve your detailing because your mental health is better, you're inspired about doing the photography later your energy levels come up we get stuck in the rut sometimes that's why I enjoy doing training it gets me out of the workshop and I get to focus my energy on something else it reinvigorates the brain and I enjoy detailing again cool right now go catch a plane ciao <laughs>